to complete 100% of Harry Potter Quidditch Champion, I'm going to have to become a pro on a broom, training and mastering all four roles, smacking balls into hoops as a chaser, smacking balls into other players as a beater, defend against people smacking balls as a keeper, and catch that small golden ball as a seeker. I'm going to hunt down all 32 trophies for the Platinum, earning cups, creating my team, upgrading my broom, getting medals and playing a total of 100 games. It begins with my character wanting to become the Quidditch champion, but before I can do that, I need to make my first team member and learn how to fly. Alright, looks like we're going to start with creating our character. Look mum, made you a sweater. Bottle fame. Challenge complete again, Quidditch gear. So we've got starting gear. And we've got the Quidditch uniforms, schools champion, World Cup uniform. I guess we've got to unlock those. And then we've got a Hogwarts travel school uniform. So we've only got these two. So I guess we'll go with the Gryffindor one. Oh, and then we can choose the house. I'm going to go with Ravenclaw just because the blue. Every Quidditch champion's journey has to start somewhere. And for many, that's in our own backyard. In our minds. The garden is a grand Quidditch pitch, and wind blowing in the trees. All right, so we've made our character. Can you picture yourself playing among Now it's time to start playing. So we're starting in the Weasley's garden. Looks like we got some tutorial first. So we're learning the basics. We've got to fly through these rings, I guess. So it's pretty straightforward. Move forward, up and down. We can go backwards, so we can evade as well with L1. We can boost. So we got the little boost meter down at the bottom. So we can boost like that, yeah. Build up speed, fly forward, hold L2 to drift. There we go, complete the flight challenge. Each team has three chasers. They're the heart of the Quidditch team. All right, here's the rules. So we got the chasers. And the chaser's job is to, well, chase it. When the other team has the quaffle, our chasers need to get it back at all costs. Alright, so the chasers grab the big giant ball called Quaffle. We need to throw it through the hoops to get some points. So we can press up to lock onto the other opponent. If we hold R1, we can lock onto where the Quaffle is. Right, press triangle to ask for a pass. Okay. I can throw it back to him. Oh, and then it switches to the other character. Okay. And then R2 to throw it through the hoop. Here we go. To go. All right, so then we've got the opponent here. So we can boost to get close. And then we need to press R2 to steal it. Don't know if that worked. Oh, so if you keep your eyes on him for long enough, it'll kind of like auto aim onto him. And another trophy up. Ready for a match. Recruit your next chaser. Oh, I need to make another one. There we go. There's my second chaser. This is the Excited to show off our news. Oh, we got the Weasleys commentating. <laughs> oh, we're against Hermione, the mum and the brother. Okay. Our first game. Let's do it. First team to score 30 points wins. There's our first goal. Go for another shot. And we got 20 points. All right, 10 more points. Oh, look at that. Boom. Done. Purse of ploy. Now oh, there's our first game. And we've got practice progress. So we've completed the chaser training. We've got some performance at the end. We've got season rewards. We've got career fame. I do know we need to get to career level 50 for a trophy. So we'll keep an eye on that. All right. So now we're going to do the keeper tutorial. So once again, we've got to make another character. So let's do that. There we go. There's my keeper. Quidditch would be rubbish without the keeper guarding the goals. A good defense can make all the difference in a match. Your team's keeper has one very important job. Stop that quaffle. All right, so the keeper is goals. as expected. Keeper requires a goalkeeper. So we're going to be uh, to stop it. on the defense for this Their tutorial. A keen keeper inspire and guide their chasers as well. It may sound like a lot of responsibility, but nothing beats the feeling of single-handedly saving a goal. Ah, uh, so we can press down to switch characters. There we go. So we're in there. And kind of shimmy around. You can hold L2 and that'll put you in the middle. Okay. Oh, we can press L1 in a direction to kind of like dive. Oh, it does use um like stamina though. So it can't just spam. All right. So if we hold R1, we can keep a lock on to the quaffle. Get ready. It's time to save. 
There we go. Easy enough. Then we gotta kick it out. There we go. Show us leadership skills. Press triangle to draw a play caller. And then we press R2 to drop them. Oh, okay, so they're those kind of hoops that we can go through. So if I put those down, my team can fly through them and get like a better boost. So now I can press down to switch and I can go to my chaser and then I've got to fly through them. Yeah, so it like regens my boost. All right, back to the keeper. All right, so R2 to kick. All right, let's see if we can deflect the shot. Come on, mate, where are you throwing it? There we go. Yeah, so if we're quick enough, we can kick it straight out instead of catching it and then throwing it. The keeper. That's me. Here's the real match. Not much really happened in this match. I just simply stayed in the goal the whole time and saved a few shots. There we go. That's a match. Victory. There we go. Now we've done the keeper tutorial. Got a few more challenges. Got to level two fame. And we got a letter. Rewards. 15 moonstones. Uh, no idea what that is. Oh, it's a currency. Okay, I guess it's for like customizations or something. Uh, and we got gold as well, so it's two different currencies. Okay. All right, next one, the beta. So now we got to make another character. And my beta is ready to go. Ah, beaters. You either love them or hate them, depending on which side of the bludger you're on. What are bludgers? They're iron balls that so, are fast, aggressive, and what's the goal for this one? A beater's job is to use a bat to drive those nasty We got a little bat. And we got to smack the, be than your the metal ball. Perfect play and totally ruining their plans. Okay, so yeah, we're going to go on offense. The goal here is to smack a metal ball into the opponent's to uh, knock them out, get them to drop the the other ball, I guess. The bludger. So switch to the beater. There she is. Press triangle to summon it. R2 to whack it. There we go. All right, so then we've got the health bar on the bottom left there. If we lose it all, we fly off the broom. Okay. Over time, we automatically get health back. Oh, so we can tackle them as well. We don't have to hit them with the, uh, with the ball. R2. Oh, wow. Okay. Bit aggressive. All right, now we're going to summon it. And we're going to try and smack him with it. So that's going to follow him now. Nice. Yeah, so we've done like half of his health. So if I summon another one, hit him back at him. And then that's going to knock him off. Oh, poor man's dead. All right, now we've got to eliminate all the opposing players. Come here, mate. We've got a ball for you. Got some, a big metal ball. <laughs> Seems easy enough. Two hits and they're down. Oh, God, he fell through the map. Oh, we've got to eliminate the keeper as well. This side. Yep, there he is. Wow, we can take the keeper out. That's crazy. There we go. That's one hit. And that's two hits. Keeper's down. See you later, bro. It's weird how they just fall through the, the floor. You'd make a fair beater. I'm ready to see them in action. All right, so now it's time for a, a full match. Look at my squad. We're against all the Weasleys and Hermione. All right, here we go. Let's, uh, let's do it. Again, not much to discuss in this one. I played the whole game as the beater, helping out my team by taking out the opposing side. Once a player is knocked off the broom, though, they will be out of the fight for it. I think it's like 11 seconds or something, so taking out the keeper and the other beater is actually super useful. I also got a trophy for eliminating the other team's beater without getting hit. Brilliant, but scary. That's the beater tutorial complete. All right, the final one. The Seeker. All right, we got our Seeker. Everybody knows the Seeker. Their job is to find and catch the elusive golden snitch to score big for their team. Easier said than done, as it's the size of a walnut. I suppose they don't call it seeking for nothing. But aside from sharp eyes, all right, so sharp reflexes, this is going to be all about speed, snitch, precision. You need to chase it and grab it before the opposing seeker does. If you can stay close to the snitch, anticipate its movements, and dodge a bludger or two, you can actually hold victory in your hands. Snitch is appearing. All right, switch to the seeker. Okay, so normally we have to find it. For now, it's revealed. So we just got to follow it. Hold our one to focus. All right, we almost filled the meter. There we go. All right, now what? Stay close, keep it in my sights. Press R2 to grab. We got it. We found the snitch. The youngest seeker in the century. I'm ready, let's win the cup. There's my squad. So this is the first proper match, I think. Like, full team match. Let's get it. We'll try and play as each character a little bit. The first to 100 points. There's my first goal. Let's switch roles. Bro, 
Bro, that was some skill right there. I bounced it off the side of the wall or something. All right, let's go beat someone up. <laughs> oh, the snitch is coming. Let's see if we can get it. Oh, we got 40 points. All right, we almost got the snitch. All right, we filled the meter. I think I can grab it. Yeah, there we go. Caught the snitch. Oh, we got 30 points for that. And constant vigilance. Match resuming. Oh, and Roderick Plum Plumpton's protege. Nice. Oh, we only conceded 10 points. We smashed him. It's not much, but it's home. There we go. Fame level 4. And I've now completed all of the tutorials. We also got a new customization for the broom, which I don't think we've actually customized the broom yet. So we'll have a look at that shortly. New brooms await. Performance. Ah, so the brooms actually are upgradable and customizable. Yeah, so if we can click this one, the clean sweep, and then we can obviously put different customization bits on it. We can press preview upgrade with square. So we can upgrade it to level two. It'll increase the speed and the agility. It costs 20 of something. Oh, that's that stone that I've been getting. Okay. My wallet, some of my currencies. I've got 45 of the stone, which seems like that's what we use for upgrades. Then we've got the gold, which I would imagine is probably the customization stuff. And then the golden key thing. I have no idea what that is. Ah, uh, so you, you also get like heroes. So obviously I could turn my keeper into uh, Ginny, but I can also change as well. So we've got Slytherin students. So that's Sebastian from the the recent Hogwarts game. Obviously, we got Cedric Diggory. So we got all the, the characters you know of, Draco Mal Malfoy. We even got the teacher, Ron. So obviously, these are a lot of these are legendary, so they'll probably be a lot more difficult to unlock. Yeah, so we purchase from the vault. You can see in the bottom left there. Purchase from market unlock when you do rewards and stuff like that. Uh, career level 45. Uh, so we can also put hats on. Oh, what the hell? Hagrid paper craft mask. <laughs> it's like the PS1 version of Hagrid. That's cool. Yeah, so you can also now unlock more customization stuff to make your character look a little bit more unique. You can even change the wand. You can change the trail of the broom. And then we can get skill points as well. They become available at career level 6. And it says my career. Currently prestige 1, career level 4. And I can change my emblem. There we go. And we got a challenge complete for it. It's level. Win rate is at zero because we've only really been doing tutorials. So we already got the Weasley Cup. So we need to get the Hogwarts House Quidditch Cup, the School Quidditch Cup, and the World Cup. Next, I jumped into my first proper cup, the Hogwarts House Quidditch Cup. I went with Ravenclaw, and then I could choose the difficulty. But I only had casual and standard available. I went with casual since it was my first time. At Hogwarts, there are few greater ways to bring honor to your house than playing on the Quidditch team. Against the likes of Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, and Slytherin. Right, so we got all four Will houses. You win the Hogwarts House Quidditch Cup? We're gonna go for the House Cup. Alright, that's my first proper match. The match was pretty close. During it, I unlocked Mischief Managed, which was for stunning a player while the highlighted for a score event. I honestly couldn't even tell you what that means, but uh, I got the trophy. It went into sudden death, and a second later, my team caught the snitch, winning my first real match. Oh, this is close. We're going to get a draw. Oh, sudden death. Oh, we caught the snitch. Nice. There we go. That's our first match, our first win. Only just one, though. Everyone starts at the beginning at Hogwarts. Nice. We got to level six. Oh, that means... So we got some Quidditch gloves, and it also means we've now got skill points. Enjoy the lead, Ravenclaw. It's the last taste of victory you'll have against us. All right, Malfoy, calm down, son. In the next game, I destroyed Slytherin, catching the snitch to finish it, while going flawless, getting another trophy called Rough Game Quidditch. Brutal. Went flawless again in game three, quickly moving into game four and stunning the keeper just before getting a goal, winning the game and getting the Hogwarts Cup. Hogwarts hero. Victory. The Quidditch Cup is mine. Reach level 11 fame as well. So now we can start using those skill points now that we get back to the main menu. We've got five points. There it is. The win. Two cups are mine. Now that I'd reached level 11, I had some skill points to spend. You get them for just simply leveling up and playing. 
after using them, I also had 180 of those moonstone currency things. These are used to upgrade brooms, so I did my first upgrade increasing its speed and agility. I went to attempt the next cup, but realised I had to complete the previous cup on the standard difficulty, and since I did it on casual, it meant I had to do it again, but on standard. The difficulty didn't really seem much harder, if I'm being honest. During one of the matches though, I did complete a mastery challenge with each of the four rolls. With the cup won again, I had plenty more moonstones, so I went and I upgraded my clean sweep broom to level 5, which is the max. Level 5 on the clean sweep. It's not any broomstick, it's a Nimbus 2000. <laughs> nice. I could now of course compete in the new cup, the Triwizard Schools Quidditch Cup. This one is between three schools, Hogwarts, the Bulbatons, which I have no idea if that's how you pronounce that one, and the Derm Strange, which again, I might be pronouncing that wrong. I obviously chose Hogwarts though, and played on advanced difficulty. The rivalry between the three greatest wizarding schools in Europe is legendary. But on the Quidditch pitch, which would prevail? The grace of Bobaton's Academy of Magic? The strength of Durmstrang Institute? Or the determination of This Hogwarts was again Ford, nothing too wizardry. difficult, although the last game was pretty close. I played at all three of the school's pitches, winning all five matches and snagging my third cup. Oh, this is a close game, it's 10 points. Woo, that was close. Try Wizard Titan, there we go. With all those levels gained, I continued to upgrade my players, maxing out in a single roll. I've always wanted to use that spell, unlock some cool new robes for my team, which I fully intended to use, but then I headed into the fourth and final cup, the Quidditch World Cup. Here I could choose between 16 countries, Obviously, I went with the United Kingdom, and I also played on the expert difficulty. But as I said, I unlocked those robes because I intended to use them, but once you go into this cup, you just use that country's robes, so I kind of unlocked the other robes for nothing, really. Could your team stand above the rest and become the ultimate Quidditch champion? But again, surprisingly, it was very easy. I first steamrolled through Japan, upgraded another broom that was of better rarity, then played South Africa, who apparently uh, bribed the referees. Talk around camp is that South Africa has bribed the referees. Now, I haven't exactly been able to prove these claims, but I haven't disproven them either. It didn't help them though. Took on Uganda, who was on a winning streak. Would you care to comment on how you plan to upset Uganda's winning streak next match? Don't worry, your secrets are safe with me. You can throw that out the window. Got a little revenge going in perfect against Spain. The United Kingdom win, living to fight another day. Then had my closest match yet against India, which happened to be my 25th win. And I went into the finals, which was actually a rematch with Japan. After beating them, I was now the Quidditch World Champions. And with that victory, the United Kingdom have won the coveted Quidditch World Cup. So I guess that's technically 100% we're done. But of course, we've still got many trophies to go. Well, I say many, we actually don't have that many. I have... 10 more trophies and one of them's the plat, so let's try and earn 9 more. After about 40 minutes of trying, I finally got my next trophy. Play caller for saving a shot from a chaser who I had debuffed with the rings. And just a few minutes later, in the same match I unlocked a superb keeper for saving a goal with a power save. Basically, instead of catching the ball, I kick it out. After that, I wanted to earn a platinum medal with each of the 4 rolls. Alright, so for this match, I'm going to try and get the Platinum Medal for the Goalkeeper. So you can see on the bottom left there, saved two goals, plus 50. So I think that's the Silver Medal. Uh, I basically need the Platinum version of any of the, the medals. There's another save. So that's four saves. Now it's turned into a Gold Medal. There's another save. Yeah, there we go. Save seven goals, Medal. So I'm guessing that means 
platinum, the one we just saw then. Kind of didn't look like platinum, but my guess is it is the platinum. So if that is the platinum, I think I need only a platinum medal now with the beta. Right, let's switch straight to the beta and just demolish everyone, basically. All right, there's the beta again. Right, there we go. So we took him out three times and we got a gold. So it's going to either be five times or six. We've still got plenty of time, so it's looking good. All right, the beta's back on the pitch. This should hopefully be the last one. Yeah, there we go. Knocked him out five times. And there's my trophy. Roll star. All right, I'm almost done. I intercepted a shot on goal and decided it was now time to tackle winning a cup on the champion difficulty. With all of them done, I wanted to get the two online trophies out of the way. Luckily, they're both super easy. Play five PvP matches and win five games of Quidditch while in a party. So I invited a friend who also helped me with games in the past. We had won three of the five online matches, or at least I think it was three. It was either two or three, I don't know. But it did mean that I only now needed two more wins while in a party. So we got them easily against bots. And now it was just the long grind to level 50, which actually unlocked at level 45, not 50, but also winning 100 matches. At this point, I think I maybe had around 60 or something. So yeah, I needed another 40. So for the next six-ish hours, it was basically just me playing on casual while AFK and letting my team win for me. All right, well, here we are in what is game 99. So hopefully, after I win this one, it should be 100. There we go, caught the snitch, won the game. And there it is, Quidditch champion, which means I have now earned 100% in the game. And you're a wizard, Harry. If you enjoyed this one, you might enjoy this next video.